This is part three and the final part of the diesel heater install. I hope you enjoy it. I hope this has given you guys information about installing these things. They're not hard to install. It just takes some time and you got to yeah, think it through as you're, as you're putting it in. I've made some mistakes on the last one I did, but this one went really smooth. Well, it didn't go well. All right, now I'm inside and I'm gonna hook up the power. So I've got connection here. This is the ground. And if you've watched any of our other videos, you'll know that I did a ground separate from the body of the bus. I did a common ground, which I have right here. This one is labeled heater ground. And that's what this is the heater. So that can come off. We will. Okay, so that gives us the power connection. Now what we've got is this here. And this is the thermostat connection and the controller. So without this, nothing works. So it goes into the unit, comes out of the unit, goes to the pump, all that stuff. So how much do we have here? Not as much as I had hoped for, but I think it's enough to go where I want. Let me show you here. Oops, sorry. I want to put it through up here into the bathroom. I'll show you where in there. So I want to bring the thermostat control in through here. And I want to run it up here. And I'm going to go up above the light switches here. And I'm going to mount it around on this side, just above the light switches. So I have to figure out what I need to do there. So that went very well. Drilled an inch, inch and a quarter hole so I could get the, the plug through. And then I'm going to bring it up here, like I said. But the wires on this controller are bottom mount. Now, I've got to take wires out of here so that I can drill a smaller hole and hopefully it doesn't look too bad. Anyway, I've got my trusty pick there. I'm going to take it apart. But first I'm going to take a picture of where the colors are here. Red and on the bottom. Okay, anyway. I'll come back when I get that done. So as you just saw, I couldn't get the couldn't get the pins out. I'm seeing more and more of them that just aren't. You just can't do it with them anymore. There's just a one-time use, put it in, you have to take it out, you gotta cut them. So I had to cut them, I drilled a hole. Right here. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go throw a fuse in and hopefully everything lights up. Success! <laughs> Great! Now I gotta put diesel in the tank. Um. <laughs> this could take a while.
Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, well, got a little bit in there. We'll have to do for now. Well, it didn't go well. <laughs> I'm glad I bought the cheap one. The expensive one, I've been more mad about it. Mm. But I put probably half a liter. Should be enough to prime it and get it fired up. So. Also, you'll notice, I know I'm gonna get the question of why didn't I just tie the diesel supply into the bus fuel tank? Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos that we've done, uh, there's a running theme. I want the living space of this bus, the tiny home, the RV, whatever you want to call it, completely separate from the bus operations. And I've seen several videos of people who have tied in their diesel heater to their fuel tank for the bus and not realized how much fuel they were going through because it's almost an endless supply and then ran out and didn't have enough to get out of where they were. And that's not a common problem but it's something that I think about. I would rather I would rather have a separate tank. So and there will be that tank that I put in there today is not the actual tank I'm going to be using permanently. I'm going to use, I'm going to put an underbody storage toolbox like you see on the sides of big buses or on tractor trailer, under trailers, underbody storage. In there I'm going to put a marine fuel tank. The marine fuel tank has a quick connect. I'm going to just adapt that down to what I need for this system and then I can just disconnect it, take out the tank, take it to the pump, fill it up. I want it completely separate from the bus, but I don't want that tank down there that's gonna be a pain to fill. So, anyway, I am going to pause here until I find how to prime this system, then I'm going to prime it up. I haven't connected the ducts yet. It's not late, so I'm probably still going to do that today, but I just want to get it up and running before I get carried Okay, I found it. Uh, because it's from a different country, the English is hard to follow sometimes. But here we go, manual oiling operation. That's priming. So I need to hold the up and down keys at the same time. And that should, that should operate the pump. So what I'm gonna do is hold that for probably five to 10 seconds, and then I'm gonna go down and check. I'm just gonna watch until the fuel gets up and comes in comes in under the floor of the bus. Then, then I'm close enough that I can just fire it up. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And you should be able to hear it. I don't know if you can hear the pump ticking. Okay, I'm gonna go check, see what happened. <laughs> All right, so I held it on for about five seconds and the fuel has come out of the tank and up the line about four or five inches. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put you down the bottom here and see if you can hear it. The pump is on the other side, underneath here, but over towards the front a bit, but let's see if you can hear this. Hope you can hear that. It's uh, being way up the front, and with the with the fan going, you really won't hear it too much. But I know the one in the camper, we can hear it when it's going. But when it's on low, it's just tick, tick, tick. You don't hear much. But that mode right there, that's on high. And if it's really cold out, that's where we'll be sitting. But whatever. <laughs> we make more noise than the pump. But I think I'm going to have to enlist the help of Christina. I'll get her to hold the buttons while I go down and watch the fuel. Okay, let's do that. I've got Christina inside. Pump's going like crazy. You can see 
a little bit happening here, but the magic is here. This, this is gonna slowly, slowly work its way up. for her to stop. So now that it's primed, let me turn it on. Yep. <coughs> the fan kicked on. Pump's gonna kick on in a second. That's blowing warm air. I can smell it. This hasn't been used for a couple of years. Definitely blowing warm air. Oh, yeah, we got heat. Now, on the wall, these, they never shut off. They just, they just heat less. Now, I'm gonna shut it off. And what it'll do now is go into a cool down mode. Success. I just found a three and a quarter hole saw at the rental shop I use all the time. It's uh, called Dad's Rental Shop. I get a 100% discount. It's great. <laughs> so I'm going to probably install this duct, just the one side. I gotta put the T on, so I gotta cut a little piece of pipe for the T, and then I gotta figure out where we're going to put the uh, duct for the outside but shouldn't be too much work. So for this T, I just need a little bit of, wow, that end went on like nothing. This one's bigger than the other one. Oh, they both go on the teeth. That is so nice. Watch this. It didn't go on this one quite so easy. <sighs> Perfect. So I need only about this much. Put the T onto the heating unit, onto the heater itself. So where's my knife? I need a knife, which I got, and I need the side cutters. So I'm going to pick I'm gonna try there. And just Roll it around. So one side goes onto the T, the other side goes on to the heater itself. And get all fancy fancy. With the hose clamps. But I think before I put it on there, I'm gonna block this end with our trusty foil tape because I'm not going to be pushing it through the other side just yet. I want to see how this is going to work for spreading the heat around. I mean, if it comes up and it just 
spreads around, I think it'll be fine. I'm not going to worry too much about about putting heat in different areas until we see. Like we typically like it to be a little cooler anyway. So I mean, if, as long as it's keeping stuff from freezing on us, and we can come in here and get out of the cold, that's kind of the main thing. And for us, if it was 15 degrees Celsius, I mean, you gotta wear a sweater, you gotta wear a sweater, that's fine. We're perfectly fine with that. It's, I mean, we are talking about winter. So we, we would really love to take this to Jasper and go snowboarding. So we could just camp in this, drive it into town, take the shuttle up to Marmot, go snowboarding for the day. We could leave the dogs in here. They would be more than fine. We're talking about Huskies. Put the heater on low if you even need it. I mean, if it's only minus 10 out, but then we don't want everything freezing inside. So we should be able to drive with the heater on. We should be able to just have the heater on. So this winter is going to be a big test for that because even if we don't go anywhere we are going out Thanksgiving that's middle of October it's bound to be minus three minus four maybe even minus five overnight so we'll try it see how it works uh, and then on the driveway I don't really want to go anywhere in the winter with it too far until we get a, an engine heater I'd like to get a diesel engine heater which would tie into the diesel line and it would circulate the water in the engine and then go to start the engine, it's already warm. But we have a generator, so if we need to plug it in for two or three hours to warm the engine up, that's what we'll do. Anyway, that's blocked off. I'm gonna move you down to the bottom and we will figure this out. So, this just needs to go on here. As far as we can go. Make sure we're level. Tighten it up. Now I want to bring. Let's move you over. Let me see. You can see. Yeah. Okay. You can see just fine. I want to bring this piece on here. And I've got to be able to tie it into there. This stuff's not the most flexible in the world because I want to put this through. And yeah, my only concern is can I still put the gray water tank in here with this like this? So I'm going to just put the tank in here the holes in it and make sure that we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and say I have plenty of room to put that in. Okay I want this to come there like that and I want it to be right about there. I'm just gonna mark on the sides like that. Get that out of the way. There it is. Oh, right in front of my face. So that just snaps on there. Just like that. And we're going to leave it probably right like that. Just going to blow out and up. If we want to, we can turn it to blow more to the back or more to the front. But, you know, depending on who's sitting in front of the thing, I think we're just going to leave it there for now. So now I'm going to just hook it up. There we go.
And with that, this heater stall install is done. I will still have to tie up the wiring in the back, which I will do. You don't need to see me do that. I'm just gonna bungee it, uh, not bungee, zip tie it together. Maybe tack it up on a hook up above. But essentially, that's it. I'll have to figure out a better way to pump the fuel over into that tank, but that does not affect the install. The install is done. I'm just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and buy the hundred dollar 12 volt uh, transfer pump and just put some hose on it and just just do it like that <laughs> all right that's that so I just want to thank you guys for watching this video if you liked it give it a like maybe subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment we really appreciate the comments that Christina and I are always talking about how we wish there were more comments good or bad it doesn't matter. We like to chit chat back and forth. Freddie, I'm talking to you. Love chit chatting back and forth with you, man. And that's it. This video is done. Not sure what's going to be next, but I'm sure it'll be looking around here. What can I do next? Ooh, cabinet doors. I'd like to put doors up in the upper cabinets and maybe the bottom ones. Who knows? We definitely need them. Stay tuned.